guys, 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 so the decision has finally been made and honestly, I am not surprised. I knew there was no freaking way she was not gonna be allowed to compete. Russia was gonna do anything in its power to get Camila to compete at the Olympics. However, before I get into any of my emotions and opinions on this mess and what we've been seeing in terms of reactions online, well, let's read the damn media release, all right? Beijing 14th, February 2022. The ad hoc division of the Court of Arbitration for the Sport has issued its decision in the arbitration procedures relating to the Russian figure skater Camila Valieva, the athlete. The applications filed by the International Olympic Committee, the World Anti-Doping Agency, and the International Skating Unions have been dismissed. The three applicants had challenged a decision issued by Rusada Disciplinary Anti-Doping Committee on the 9th of February of 2022, in which the provisional suspension imposed on Camila Valieva following the detection of the banned substances, tri trimersadine, I'm sorry, an example provided by her was lifted, allowing her to continue in her participation in the Olympic Winter Games Beijing 2022. The applications were received at the CAS Ad Hoc Division in Beijing on Friday, February 11, 2022, on Saturday, 12 February 2022. These three procedures, blah, 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 blah. Let's go forward to the reasons stated as to why her suspension was lifted, which is going to allow her to compete in the individual event. The CAS CAS panel has given the following reasons for its decision. One, it has affirmed the jurisdiction of the CAS ad hoc division in this matter and has overruled the preliminary objections raised by the athlete and the ROC in this regard, which is Russian Olympic Committee. On the basis of the very limited facts of this case and after the consideration of the relevant legal issues, it has determined that no provisional suspension should be imposed on the athlete due to the following exceptional circumstances. 1. The athlete is a protected person under the World Anti-Doping Code, which I knew was going to be the thing that we're going to hold on to the most. She is a minor, she's a minor, therefore her consequences, if you can even call it a consequence because the investigation is still going to go underway, so she will receive consequences for her actions, it's going to be less than if she wasn't a protected person. Mind you, she's training 16 in like two months, so saved by the skin of her teeth or whatever that phrase is. I'm sorry, but the reasoning that because she's a minor, she should not be penalized for having a positive doping test makes no sense. Like, what kind of logic do we use when we're like, you know what, she can compete even if she does win, we will still hold her accountable by not giving her the medal even if she is anywhere near the podium, which she will be, <laughs> but we're just gonna let her compete Pete still like how is the logic working it's like she's a protected person she's a minor so she cannot be held accountable for this but she can win a gold medal like what's the one to one comparison there it just doesn't make any sense that argument that because she's 15 which by the way she's a month away from turning 16 so that age is so arbitrary it doesn't make any sense and and i know it's not her action i know this was given to her that is the minor part that she was definitely a victim of the system, a victim of her coaching team. I mean, it's asking a lot of a 15-year-old to stand up to a systematic program and team to Piritze, who's scary enough, and expect them to be like, no, thank you. I have morals. I will not take what you're giving to me. That is even considering if she even knew what she was being given. But the reality is that she tested positive. It was in her system. It was given to her. She did take it. So even if you are like, she will be held accountable for this, what is the point of giving her and not just her but the team that put her in this situation a gold medal because that gold medal is not just Camila's gold medal it is team Tutberitze's gold medal it is team Tutberitze who might just get a podium sweep and because Camila got tested positive not only is there not a medal ceremony for the team event but there will not be a medal ceremony for the individual event if she's on the podium there will not be the medals will not be able to be given out because if she is on the podium and then later on they decide that they are going to take her medals away then what's the point of holding a medal ceremony and then what's the point of allowing 15 year olds to be at the olympics it just doesn't make any sense to me if 15 year olds if a certain age cannot be held accountable for doping then don't have them at the olympics and i know that it is not her choice that she took that we cannot make that judgment because she is a minor but the choice was made to give it to her so we're not punishing the root of the problem which is the systematic team behind her she is a victim of her environment and we're not sending the message that that environment is wrong we're sending the message that, that environment is what makes champions and even if you get caught even if the playing field is not equal 
we will let you because you are Russia and this is figure skating and you're meant to dominate. Like, I don't know what else kind of message we're letting on. But that argument that because she's a minor and she's a protected person, which they're not protecting her, that is the most ironic name in the world. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. You're not just rewarding the athlete. You are rewarding the team. You're letting them know that this is okay. And even if they mess up, it's still gonna be okay. It doesn't make sense. And they will start to gaslight us. They will. They will grab the suspension list and start saying she's innocent. That doesn't mean she's innocent. We're not debating whether she's innocent or not in terms of whether the positive doping test was positive. It was. It's on paper. This was just about a suspension, which is what I don't understand is why are they making so many exceptions to the rule? Like, yes, we're gonna let her compete, but even if she does win, we're not gonna give her the medals because it could be taken later on. Okay, so you're just gonna give her the experience and then cause even a bigger scar if in the end medals get taken away, which by the way, I don't think they will. I don't think any reform, any change to the Russian system, let alone Team Tutberis' system will happen. I don't think any change will come out of this. This is the irreparable harm that they're trying to prevent to the athlete is coming to the sport. Continue. The Rusada anti-doping rules and the WADC are silent with respect to the provisional suspension imposed on the protected person while these rules have specific provisions for different standards of evidence and for lower sanctions in this case of protected persons. More mess about the fact that because she's younger, which again doesn't make any sense, you're trying to protect the person from the people around her. I don't think this is protecting her. I think this is putting her right in the line of fire because every single spectator, media outlet, when she gets that gold, because to me it's a question of when, not if, when she gets that gold, she will be under scrutiny for the rest of her life at a level that we have yet to see because this story has become the biggest story of the Olympics. So you're not protecting Camila, you're putting her right at the the center you're putting her as bait in the sea of sharks because everybody is ready to attack like media the reporters the fans everybody's just bloodthirsty to see some kind of justice now for some crazy people justice is like harassing this young girl so she will get even more harassment now, I assure you that. So you're not protecting her, you're just putting her in even more danger, stress, and just mental strain. Like, the amount of pressure and the amount of stress this girl has been put through is not ending today. It's barely starting as soon as she gets that gold medal, I believe it. And I'm sure that in Russia it'll be easier because she will be seen as a hometown hero. But around the world, if she ever tries to do like tours internationally, yes, this has raised her profile and maybe if she can roll with the punches, she will be fine. But it's a very hard ask to do of a 15 year old girl to not mind the negativity online. When right now, all that I see is a lot of disappointment negativity. I don't speak Russian, I am not on Russian Twitter. I don't know what's going on on that side of Twitter, but in the rest of the world, it's a lot a lot of anger. So protected person is not being protected in my opinion. You're supposed to protect the person, not the athlete. <laughs> like you're protecting her athletic career versus her mental health. That's how I see it. Anyways, the other reason, the panel considered fundamental principles of fairness, proportionality, irreparable harm, and the relative balance of interest as the between the applicants and the athletes who did not test positive during the Olympic Games in Beijing and is still subject to a disciplinary procedure on the merits of the following positive anti-doping test undertaken in September of 2021. In particular, the panel considered that preventing the athlete from competing at the Olympic Games would cause her irreparable harm in these circumstances. So again, holding on to the fact that she's one, a minor, and two, the test was taken in December during the Russian nationals. That still doesn't mean much. That basically means it happened then. It doesn't mean it's happening now. That argument doesn't really work in a sport like figure skating when you would need the enhancement mostly during training rather than during the actual performance, if I'm being completely honest, because figure skating is a lot about repetition, 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 and conditioning your body. And if you're taking that drug during the most important time, which is training, I mean, there's not much you can do at the competition besides do what your body knows what to do. So that argument to me, not as heavy as it seems. And also they're holding on to the fact that it happened in December. And adding on to that, the last argument is the only one that I see some kind of weight to. So the last argument is the CAS panel has also emphasized that there was a serious issue of ultimately notification of the result of the athlete's anti-doping test that was performed in December, 2021, which impinged upon the athlete, athlete's ability to establish certain legal requirements for her benefit, which such late notification, not her fault in the middle of the Olympic winter game 2022. So basically, why did it take six weeks? 
to be told that this was a positive test? Why did it happen in the middle of the Olympic Games? That I do think is the most unjust and I am actually on Camila's or Camila's team side on this one. Why was it set so late? The quicker, the better. It should not have taken this long, but also I'm sure this lab was doing thousands of tests for all the athletes there. And on top of that, they did release a statement saying that there was some understaffing issues at the lab due to COVID-19. In conclusion, the panel determined that permitting the provisional suspension to remain lifted was appropriate. And well, first of all, the reactions online is everybody's heartbroken. There's a lot of talk about the death of the sport, the death of the integrity of the sport, which again is a subjective sport. So it's hard to sell people on integrity of a subjective sport already as it is, but this does not help. A lot of people are saying that this sets a very dangerous precedent saying that basically if you're a minor and you're caught doping, you can get away with it because you're a protected person. And I see that argument and that argument is real. This sets a very bad precedent for the sport and for doping cases in general at the Olympics. It just, it feels, I don't know how to say this. It feels like they're sacrificing the sport in order to not anger the Russian Federation. That's what it feels like. And as, as sad as it is to say, I feel like the irreparable harm is still going to get made to Camila Valieva, like she's still going to go through irreparable harm if she walks away with this Olympic medal. And I don't even want to talk about what will happen if she doesn't walk away with this Olympic medal, if she walks away with silver instead. Like, the amount of jokes and gotcha moments, the internet is a mean place. Like, the amount of also disappointment within herself, you know, everybody in Russia, I'm sure, is going to be like, after all this mess, you still couldn't even get the gold medal. Like, those arguments will be thrown at her. And then her own mental health, like, she has gone through so much already and she doesn't even reach that. Like, I don't even want to think about that. I think she will definitely get that gold medal. But then still, it's like, it's a lose, lose, lose argument, honestly. However, I think letting her skate is worse for the sport like they're literally allowing this scar to be made on the sport rather than giving a girl consequences which they say are yet to come because the investigation is not over this hearing was just about lifting the suspension or not but later on you know once they agree on whatever the sanctions or consequences or whatever might be because there is a, a positive test that still has yet to be addressed like this hearing was just about whether she can skate in the individual event yes or no and whether they can keep the medals yes or no which they're letting team russia keep the medals which again is so unfair for team usa and for team japan to be placed under a team that the main reason they're still in first is because of this athlete who shouldn't have even been practicing in the first place when she was suspended and then later on was allowed to still skate as an individual it's a mess i think it says a very bad indicator to the world about the state of figure skating right now i think it kind of shows how much politics play in the game i feel like if this would have happened to a different athlete from a different federation we would not be in this legal battle so hard it would be a much easier suspension <laughs> That would have been made that is my personal opinion and if you need any proof that if this would have happened to another athlete from a smaller federation that didn't have as much political power in the sport of figure skating even for an athlete who was from a prominent federation like the usa but maybe has slightly different morals than the russian federation they wouldn't have been allowed to participate in an olympic event with a positive doping test if you need an example of that think of shikari richardson who the last summer olympics made news because she was banned due to marijuana freaking marijuana because her mother died she was sad and she smoked it shikari richardson rightly so said can we get a solid answer on the difference on her situation and mine my mother died and i can't run and i was also favored to play top three the only difference i see is that i'm a black young lady also that she's from the usa federation meaning that the USA will try to uphold the moral standards and will not fight for having their athlete compete when a doping test is tested positively <laughs> like it's it's it feels like we're in a simulation <laughs> and then later on the team USA released a statement saying we are disappointed by the message the decision sends it is a collective responsibility of the entire Olympic community to protect the integrity of the sport and to hold our athletes coaches and all involved to the highest of standards athletes have the right to know they are competing on a level playing field unfortunately today that right is being denied this appears to be another chapter in the systematic and pervasive disregard for clean sport by Russia we know this case is not yet closed and we call on everyone in the Olympic movement to to continue to fight for clean sport on behalf of the athletes around the world. The main thing 
in terms of the Olympic Committee and Team USA and everybody else, they're basically they're all saying that they're disappointed with this decision. Even Ashley Wagner made a statement talking about her own personal experience saying, my first drug test was at 13. From a very early age, you are taught that you are responsible for what goes into your body. Even if someone gives you something and tells you to take it, it's your responsibility to be 100% certain that it's cleared for your sport. I think this one is a bit of a double-edged sword because she's saying that Camila should be held more personally be responsible for that. But then she later on goes to extend her argument saying, we have now created a precedent where your age can get you off the hook. We have two systems now, those who can be held accountable and those who can't. That being said, I will say time and time again, Camila is put in an extremely vulnerable position here. I agree with the second statement more that this is a dangerous precedent to be set, but I don't think that putting Camila more personally responsible in terms of saying she should have known what she would she should have been putting on her body is a lot of to ask of a 15 year old girl to tell her federation, I mean coach of the year according to the ISU, the greatest coaching team in Russia for ladies, telling them no, I will not take that sir, thank you very much, I will go now and practice, like that is a big ask. This is just a girl who's trying to get to the Olympics to achieve a dream, a goal, which honestly I think she could have achieved without the drugs. I think she is extremely talented. I think this takes away from her talent. This takes away, this is a stain not just on the sport, but on her legacy. And again, I am saying this time and time again, they're not protecting Camila like they think they are. If they would have suspended her, yes. It would have been probably the biggest heartbreak of her life. It would have. But now they're putting a target on her back. They're putting a sword through the heart of a million skating fans. They're further damaging the integrity of the sport, which is already quite fragile and it's bringing a lot of attention to the sport but a lot of negative attention like i don't think people are now considering this sport even a legitimate one which was hard to argue about to begin with and now it's even worse like again i, I don't know how many times i can say the same thing but basically i think it's a lot worse for the sport to let her skate but i wanted to also read this statement from na also shout out to na i love her she says the more i think about it what troubles me the most is that i fear that team Tutperitze and russ federables use this to ensure that they're not held responsible for what they've done i'm afraid that nothing will come of this exactly i think that letting her skate not only sets a precedent in terms of the sport but it's something that now team Tutperitze and the russian federation can hold on to to be like see we didn't do anything wrong, even though on the paper it states positive test for a banned substance, they will still hold up that piece of paper and say, yeah, but did she skate? Did she win a gold medal? Yes and yes. That means we did nothing wrong. Case closed. So it's like they're going to be able to gaslight us with this suspension being lifted. And I don't think the consequences are going to be given out because they won't even give the very obvious, what I thought was a very obvious consequence of athlete caught doping. Okay, athlete suspended. No, even that is turned into a whole argument thing. Like, no, I don't think that Team Dutberitze will be stopped. If Team Dutberitze falls, it will be by their own volition. It will not be because the IOC or the ISU attempted to reform them. And this just sets the stage for the rest of her life. Hopefully, she knows that what's coming is not going to be the easiest part. It's definitely going to be the hardest part after this Olympics, especially depending on whether she gets that gold or she doesn't. Both outcomes are going to be tough. I don't know which one's going to be tougher, honestly. I just really don't wish this upon any other skater especially considering how young the skaters are and i still stand by the fact that if 15 year old is too young to not be given consequences then why are we giving them a gold medal maybe they shouldn't even be there in the first place it just doesn't make any sense yes we can award them but no we can't punish them and both reasons being because they're so young it doesn't make any sense. i don't think i'm even making sense anymore i'm just ranting again pure emotion pure just bafflement but still i was not surprised that is what's crazy like i still think all of this is crazy but i was not surprised i would have been more surprised if they didn't let her skate because i know how powerful the russian federation is i know how much pressure is on team Tutberitze, especially now considering the political situation that russia is in right now they need to look strong and having their main girl not skate is not good for optics right now so i just felt there was no way in hell that camina valia was not gonna skate but now i'm terrified to see what the hell will happen to this girl's career if if she does win, if she doesn't win, it will be a shit show either way. Even a bigger shit show than right now, I believe. Which is hard to believe because this has all been a mess. And again, still no team medal ceremony. Like, we can't even get that. <laughs> like, they won't even give us that. They could've, they could, if they would've just added in that statement, oh, and tomorrow at 2 p.m. is the medal ceremony, it would've been, well, oh, at least, you know? Thank you, thank God. Also, a few other notes. Darius Oshova is back on the ice. 
that was suspicious, <laughs> don't you think? I mean, I'm happy, but it's odd that they were like, you know what, that is Ashoba, happy-go-lucky Daria, who I think that news was gonna be, oh, look at her, she's back on the ice. But at the same time, I was like, I don't think this is a good news. They think it is, it just makes me remember, oh, there's another girl that Team Zubarita broke and had to come back home in a wheelchair and now is back on the ice. Like, that, that just reminded me of what this training does. And the fact that she was doping to do this intensive training that her body couldn't handle. Like, think about it. She was taking a heart medication that would just bring more blood to your system so that her body could handle the training, the intensive, intensive training that they would do. And they would probably do this on the daily or on the weekly, I don't know, allegedly. But, well, allegedly no, because Camila got caught with it in the system, but allegedly the rest of the skaters. So that is what coming back on the ice has made me be like, oh God, there's gonna be another one. There's gonna be another girl. There's gonna be another 13 year old that's gonna dominate juniors, that's gonna be 15, that's gonna dominate the first two seasons, only to be replaced by the next 15 year old in the next Olympic cycle. This will continue. And that's why I think the suspension is horrible because it will happen again. I assure you, maybe they won't get caught, but the same story is gonna repeat itself because Team Tutberitze does not look like they're going anywhere. If they do fall, it's because of their own volition, not because anybody tried to protect these children or put any sort of reform or consequences against them. And yeah, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I was not surprised by the result, but I was still shocked that they're so brazen about it. But I was expecting this result. Only a confident 35-year-old could look at Daddy in the eye. Girl, I couldn't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> and be like, no, Terry, I will not be taking that. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm like, no, you do as you're told. That is the culture of Team Tutberitze and the absence of Tutberitze in this whole mess. Her statements have just been talking about the fact that she's innocent. We know she's innocent. Girl, we know she's not innocent. Like, that's not what we're debating. We're debating whether she's still going to be allowed to skate, regardless of her not being innocent. If innocent in this case means she was, she got a positive test. If innocent to you means she's a good girl, then yeah, she's innocent, but she got a positive doping test. Like, she has a banned system in her system that, you see, that's already the gaslighting starting. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's already talking about the fact that that didn't happen. No, that did. It's on the piece of paper. And let's do the most impressive shout out yet. <laughs> As always, shout out to Timothy, Natalia, Leslie, J -J -J Jordan, Antonio, Mansaka, Maria, Melissa, Lauren, Katie, and yes, and there is a new new in the system, not a Bansa substance <laughs> in the system, but a new new called Corina. Shout out to you. And if you want to support me, Twitter, merch, and Patreon are all down below. And hopefully, I'll talk to you guys sometime soon. Bye bye.